So as we've talked about some of these different issues, one of the things we have to keep in mind is some of the legal risks um, in this area and with you know the labels that, that get affixed to different generations. And you know we have definitely seen an increase in claims and lawsuits, particularly in Silicon Valley, on ageism um, and age issues. And um, you know, so while we're talking about millennials definitely in this conversation and we can retain them and what would attract them to the workplace, it's important to think too about other generations and how we can create and foster that sense of community and that sense of belonging and retain uh, other generations in the workplace as well. Um, one of the things you know that comes up in, in some of these lawsuits is the labels and the way that people talk in the workplace about some of these issues. And so avoiding things like labeling you know an older generation as you know slow and steady um, or a younger generation as being rule breakers who are undesirable. Um, and there definitely has been a push um, and an increase in the number of age-related complaints that have that have been filed against um, a dozen top tech companies in the Valley. Um, and a lot of these cases are ongoing and there's no real strong lessons we can learn yet from some of them, but definitely thinking about these issues and being sensitive to your job postings um, and how you're recruiting and how you're looking for talent uh, should really be top of mind for, for different legal employers. What's your, been your experience with that? Yeah, I mean, I think that you just need, you need to be careful about the way that you approach your recruiting and the way that you advertise your jobs. I mean, you want to avoid saying things like, we're looking for young, fresh talent, or we're looking for, you know, for um, like, you know, young, out of the box thinkers. I mean, you need to just be careful that that when you're looking at and also when you're looking at who to hire, um, you're not focused on just like, let's say you want someone who has a junior skill set. You can't just focus on people who may be new college grads. You want to focus on people who, you know, we're in the Bay Area. There are a lot of people now that are going to coding schools as sort of a second career. And so they may be new to, to technology and may have taken some sort of new training programs. So you want to make sure that you're carefully considering all of those applicants equally and just be very careful about when you're setting your goals for who do you have in mind for this role? What's your ideal candidate? Just make sure that you think through that in terms of a defined skill set that you're looking for rather than uh, a, you know, a person who matches a certain age criteria or a certain, um, you know, a certain demographic. And, and I think, you know, you need to be aware of that. There are some some jobs I think people think may naturally lend themselves to uh, younger folks, but we're seeing now with boomers re-entering the, the workforce, um, you know, since they've retired is taking on part-time jobs because, you know, they want to get out of the house more or because they need additional income in addition to a pension or 401k that they're using to live off of. You know, some of those workers are, are really amazing and it, it's a detriment to employers if you don't consider the skills that they have on the table, particularly given where we are in the economy right now where we have a, you know, there are areas of the country that have labor shortages. So you, you should be considering that and not being wedded to, you know, an age demographic and what you're looking for. Yeah, and also important to think about the different technologies that you're using, um, you know, whether it's a uh, web-based uh, application portal or, or um, something else that makes sure that you can um, not inadvertently screen out different people, you know, by having age brackets, for example, or certain year brackets that you can describe your experience and, and making sure that you can actually describe experience that may have come earlier so that, um, you know, people who do have uh, older experience can still be considered and, and, be, and that's relevant to the employer. Right.